Okay, aloha and welcome to the first session of the Finance Committee here at the West Hawaii Civic Center. It is Tuesday, December 18th, 2012, and the time is 2.31. I'd like to ask everyone to turn your cell phones, pagers, and other mobile communication devices off or to the silent mode. Mahalo. I'd like to now welcome the members of the Finance Committee. To my right, Council Oak, oh, he's not here. Uh, Margaret Willey, to my far left, Council Member Gregor Elegant, Council Member Zendel Kern, Council Member Drew Kanuha, Council Member Karen Eel, Council Member Jay Yoshimoto, and Council Member Brenda Ford. I will now call this meeting to order. At this time, we would like to take statements from the public on agenda items. Please be advised that you have three minutes to speak on each agenda item. I'd like to start with Kau. Good afternoon. Do we have any testifiers there? What was that? Oh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Chair. No, no testifiers in Kau. Okay, let's go to Pahoa. Good afternoon. Do we have any testifiers in Pahoa? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. No, we do not have any testifiers for your committee today. Okay, let's move on to Hilo. Good afternoon, Nora. Do we have any testifiers in Hilo? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes, we have one testifier in Hilo. Okay, let's go down to Waimea. Good afternoon. Do we have any testifiers in Waimea? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. We do not have any testifiers, but we do have Robert J. Price, who is on the ad hoc committee, and he's here as a member uh, for questions and answers for the committee, if you so desire. Thank you. And we have one testifier here in Kona. So uh, I'll start off with Hilo. Can you call your testifier? Okay, Madam Chair, our only testifier in Hilo is John Ota, and he will be commenting on communication 641.7. And can you state your name for the record? That he is the person. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the committee for uh, allowing me to share my thoughts. My name is John Ota. I was born and raised on this island. I read the 14 December 2012 Tribune Herald article pertaining to island property tax. My comments pertaining to the referred independent study which was conducted and perceived inequities by some West Hawaii residents may not provide all information needed to make an accurate decision. Evidently, the Big Island is not where you were born, nor do you fully comprehend what Hawaii is all about. Hawaii is unique in many ways in comparison to mainland United States. I've spent many years living in the U.S. and am well aware of the huge difference in the people and their thought processes. I might point out that the people born here still maintains a spirit of aloha and compassion for the majority, whereas mainland USA do not understand the meaning of those words or unable to express their thoughts and put those words into action. The county property tax rates were established when the majority of the populace worked in sugarcane plantations. The one dollar for a 10 hour workday was the normal standard in those days. 
the same mainland USA manual workers were earning more than a dollar an hour. The difference in earning power for workers on this island still exists today. Why is it that this island received the lowest hourly rate or yearly income, even compared to the rest of the islands in Hawaii? And yet, this is the acceptable way things have existed. My question to the council is, who or what group is making all this noise about inequities? Are they the wealthy that live on this island part of the year? Or are they the individuals who have moved to this island to get away from their prior residence? These people found that living here is more comfortable in comparison to where they came from. Otherwise, why was the decision made to move here? The article criticizes heavily on tax rates only, without consideration of earning income comparison between island workers and similar mainland community. Can you when words, at this point? It's I'm almost sure. finished. I have one, but two, three more sentences. When words such as Lord and most in comparison to other parts of the country are used, I ask what other parts of the country? Is the comparison based only on a tax rate without consideration for any of the many other factors? Why is the council reacting to this issue that will benefit a few complainers instead of the many issues that could benefit all residents of the island? Mainland USA is connected with land and income. What state or portion of government was ever granted governed by a kingdom. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Your, your three minutes are up. I beg your pardon, but I have read this paper and it only took me two minutes to finish. If you will let me finish, I only have a couple of more sentences and that's it. Unless your clock runs differently than mine does. Um, we were running a clock, sir. What state or portion of government was ever governed by a kingdom? Big Island is isolated by ocean with hardly any earning income other than the tourist industry. When will the council members remove their microscopic view tunnel vision, open their eyes wide, and include the many variables before stating an opinion on any major issue? All of you in the council and county workers earn an income far greater than the majority of workers on this island. The only people complaining are people who were not born on this island. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time I'd like to call um, Susan McGeary. I can't quite, Megichi. Thank you. And if you could speak into the mic and state your name for the record. Um, can you turn on the, yeah, push the button there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Susan McGeechee. Uh, I've lived in Kona since 1988. Uh, 2010, my husband and I decided to open a vacation rental in my house. I live here north of Kona. I went about it legally. I went and got a license. I went and got a GE license. I went and got a business license. I paid my GE tax. I paid my THC taxes. Paid everything. And then I get a letter from the county that says you owe for three years of back taxes on your property because you're no longer eligible because you have a home, uh, you have a home-based business. And I said, well, let's see. I sat down and tried to figure out these are the things that you can buy in my neighborhood. Okay, you can buy. Fresh eggs, hydroponic vegetables, landscape plants, mini blinds. You can have knives sharpened. You can have your hair dyed. You can have it cut. You can have a babysitter. You can get piano lessons, a mechanical work, family photograph, carpet cleaner, electrician, a draftsman, a writer producer, carpenters, and uh, many contractors. Uh, you can get a sign for your car. You can get a travel agent, and you can get a gardener. All in my neighborhood. Okay, they're not getting the exemption. They're not getting charged back taxes. 
where do we draw the line between what is a business and what isn't, number one. Number two, the second point I have is they're building a university at the bottom of this hill. When this university comes in and somebody sends their kid here, and I send my kid here from August to December, that's less than six months. Is that going to be a TAT if you rent your house out? Or is that going to be GET? Or if I'm illegal, I can just go underground and rent it out myself. We need to approach this and make it fair. My neighbor next door doesn't pay any GED taxes, but she rents her place out. So I rent mine, I get GET, I get TAT, I pay all my taxes, I pay everything, and I get penalized. Where, at what point, are we business friendly or not business friendly? When you can get two dozen types of businesses from people working at their home in my neighborhood, where is it fair as a business person? I'm paying taxes just like anybody else. How, at what point, do you say you have a business or you don't? I feel if I'm renting part of my house or I'm a mechanic in part of my, that should be charged at a rate that I'm conducting business at. Not my whole property disqualified. My husband and I have worked for all of these years since 1980 to make <coughs> this house what it is. I've raised my children here. They're all grown and gone and graduated, married and all that. And now here we want to make a business and live here and retire, and I can't even do that. Please help me as a council to understand what are my taxes for, and I am I legal, not legal, and are all of these people with all these businesses legal or not? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify on any of the agenda items? Being that there is none, this concludes the statements from the public. So let's move on to referrals. So, Deputy Clerk, will you please read Communication 2 into the record? Communication 2, quarterly uh, reallocation report, first quarter, July through September 2012, of the 2012-2013 fiscal year, from Director of Human Resources, Ronald K. Takahashi, dated September 27, 2012, transmitting the above report. May I have a motion to close file on Communication 2? It has been moved by... Councilman Zendo Kern and seconded by uh, Jay Yoshimoto. Any discussion? Being that, do we have any? No. Being that there is no discussion, Deputy Clerk, will you please take the vote? Ms. Uh, Leo? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Ilana? Aye. Mr. Kanula? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Poindexter? Aye. Chair Poindexter, you have nine ayes. Communication two is filed. Deputy Clerk, will you please read communication three into the record? Communication three, report of change orders authorized October 1st through 15, 2012, from Finance Director Nancy Crawford, dated October 30th, 2012, transmitting a report of change orders authorized for the period of October 1 to October 15, 2012, Pursuant to Hawaii County Code Section 11-2. May I have a motion to close file on Communication 3? So moved. Moved by um, Council Member Margaret Willey and seconded by Council Member um, Fresh Onishi. Oh, I should say Dennis. Sorry. <laughs> okay, any um, discussion on... I just want to note that I think Nancy Crawford is available for any questions in Hilo. That's yes, correct. I think I see her in the audience there. Okay, so any discussion? No? Being that there is no further no discussion, Deputy Clerk, will you please take the vote? Ms. Hia? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Ilaga? Aye. Mr. Kanula? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Poindexter? Aye. Chair Poindexter, you have nine ayes. Communication 3 is filed. Deputy Clerk, will you please read Communication 3.1 into the record? Communication 3.1, report of change orders authorized October 16th through the 31st, 2012, 
from Finance Director Nancy Crawford dated November 20, 2012, transmitting a report of change orders authorized for the period of October 16 to October 31, 2012, pursuant to Hawaii County Code Section 11-2. May I have a motion to close file on communication 3.1? So moved. Moved by Council Member Margaret Willey and seconded by uh, Dennis Onishi. Any discussion? Being that there is no discussion, Deputy Clerk. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, on that one, we have the uh, Safe Refuge Software Assurance Plan that we're 99.9. That means that we're just, that one's just on budget, correct? The original contract amount. No, um, I'm good. You're okay. Thanks. Okay. Deputy Clerk, will you please take the vote? Ms. Eoff? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Lagan? Aye. Mr. Kanoha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Poindexter? Aye. Chair Poindexter, you have nine ayes. Communication 3.1 is filed. Deputy Clerk, will you please read Communication 3.2 into the record? Report of change orders authorized November 1st to the 15th, 2012, from Finance Director Nancy Crawford, dated November 30th, 2012, transmitting a report of change orders authorized for the period of November 1st to November 15th, 2012, pursuant to Hawaii County Code Section 11-2. May I have a motion to close file on communication 3.2? So moved. It's been moved by Council Member Zendo Kern and seconded by Councilmember Gregor Elegon. Any discussion? Being that there is no discussion, Deputy Clerk, will you please take the vote? Ms. Pia? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Elegan? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Point Dexter? Aye. Chair Point Dexter, you have nine ayes. Communication 3.2 is filed. Deputy Clerk, will you please read Communication 7 into the record? Communication 7, Transfer of Funds, November 1st through the 15th, 2011, from Controller K. Oshiro, dated November 27, 2012, transmitting a report of transfers authorized showing transfers made from November 1st through November 15, 2012. May I have a motion to close file on Communication 7? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilmember Margaret Willey and seconded by Councilmember Karen Eoff. Any discussion? Being that there is no discussion, Deputy Clerk, will you please take the vote? Ms. Eoff? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Ilaga? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Willey? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Point Dexter? Aye. Chair Point Dexter, you have nine ayes. Communication 7 is filed. Deputy Clerk, will you please read Communication 9, Resolution 14-13 into the record. Communication 9, Resolution 14-13, a resolution to continue to provide all council members with mileage reimbursement for the use of a privately owned automobile on official county business. The agenda notes that the communication is from Finance Director Nancy Crawford, when in actuality this communication has been submitted by Council Member Ford and we're making that note here. Um, from Council Member Ford, that dated November 29, resolved that all council members be provided a mileage allowance reimbursement on a per mile basis for the use of a privately owned automobile on official county business pursuant to chapter two, section 2-101B, Hawaii County Code. May I have a motion to approve resolution 14-13? So moved. Oh, sorry. Okay, moved by um, Brent, uh, Council Member Brenda Ford and seconded by Council Member Jay Yoshimoto. Any discussion? Yes. Okay. Um, Council Member Brenda Ford, thank you. Thank you. Um, during the past term, the mileage, we did mileage <coughs> rather than a flat $600 a month per Council Member because it was determined that those council members traveling the greatest distance in their um, districts were being under reimbursed and those council members that had very tiny districts were being over reimbursed. So I issued this resolution 14-13 
in order to continue that practice of reimbursing on a per mile basis rather than a flat $600 a month. And I ask for the council's support on this because, um, well, I'll let Mr. Yoshimoto discuss his amendment. So I'll just leave it at that for this time. Thank you. Um, council member um, Ben Booker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I personally, I, I've, I've followed what happened before when there was a $600 a month and when there was a, I thought there was also the option where you could actually claim actual mileage or take the flat fee. I would rather see the discretion of that left to the chair because there might be value in having a flat fee, not necessarily as high as $600, but tracking your actual mileage can actually be very cumbersome sometimes. And for certain people, it makes sense to go with the flat fee. They might give a little bit, they might gain a little bit. Um, but we also see how tracking actual mileage gets very, very expensive. And we have case, uh, points from last, um, last session where some council members were receiving quite a large amount based on actual. So I don't know if it necessarily um, gives savings in all cases. And I would think that uh, the chair would have that discretion to, to have that uh, base provide that number. That would make sense. That's my feeling. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Jay Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to hear from Council Members today about their thoughts on this. You know, in looking um, at the past uh, reimbursements, um, we can do this several ways. You know, one, I think, in thinking about this, the $600 amount um, is high. I think that amount should be reduced. Uh, when I was uh, initially looking at this and, and trying to set a policy, um, I figure $300 came to mind. Because you know, at, at this point in time, you're looking at um, the mileage reimbursements as what they could be. I can't tell, uh, but you know, based on past practice, we could have some idea. The only problem is in the past, uh, there were only certain members that were taking or doing actual stuff that just waived and, and things of that nature. So, you know, council members, what I'm asking to do is just to, to uh, well, one, hear your thoughts, two, um, have some flexibility. Uh, but you have my assurance that you know 600 is too much. I don't know what the mayor does, and you know that really doesn't matter because it doesn't apply to us. But I think um, in looking um, at the amounts that uh, we do travel, I think 300 is like a good figure that um, consumers should have the option to do. Because one of the problems is this: if you look at the past um, uh, mileage claims, it's very possible that everyone could claim six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month. And, and if we were to do that uh, this coming term, I'll tell you, we won't, we won't have enough money to finish this budget year. Um, I can't compel any council member to, to take the flat rate to save people money, because I think in, in some instances it will actually save uh, money. Because, you know, legally, I think, uh, like any other employee, you're entitled to claim actual mileage, you know, so long as it's uh, for work purposes. So, uh, you know, this is Ms. Ford's uh, resolution. So I don't have an amendment today, because no matter what happens, um, this is going to move forward to the council, either you know, with a positive or negative recommendation. It doesn't really matter to me today, but what I'd like to do is hear from council members their thoughts uh, in terms of uh, what they'd like to see. But I think um, having the option would be good. Um, and if we don't, for whatever reason, we're, we're set on actual, and if we run out of money, then you know, I'll just come back and uh, ask for more money from our, our council members to uh, try and uh, meet that budget uh, concern. But anyway, I'd like to hear from other council members. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council Member Drew Kanuha? Yes. Um, I also agree uh, $600 seems uh, extremely excessive. Um, I, I don't know exactly what the right amount is, 300 I don't know if you worked that out or anybody else has worked it out, but less than a few hundred dollars I think is a lot more reasonable. I think we should have the option. Um, when you look at the past with the uh, actual miles, I mean, we, we all have this this paper, I don't know if it's actually a public record, but um, the two highest um, recorded amounts, you know, every single month is a thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars. It's it just blows my mind that it can reach that that amount of money, and it just seems a little too excessive even there. So, um, for myself, I think the given the option would be a lot a lot better. I feel, I mean, even not the option. I feel the Three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, whatever, whatever it is, um, we can all decide upon. Set it at that, and let's make it that 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 level. I mean, it it, it, it can come to an extreme amount, and I don't think that's right for the taxpayers to have to fund, to have to provide that amount of money for us in traveling. 
Thank you. Um, can I ask um, that uh, Council Member Martha Williams speak, and then I will go to Brenda Boyd. Uh, yeah, I disagree completely with having a flat rate set for all. Uh, I think, at least with me, it would discourage me for doing county business that I might otherwise do. Um, I'm not independently wealthy. I have a much larger district than, say, Drews and different communities. And I think that we need to be accountable and transparent. I also think that if you have a set amount, um, and a flat amount, that that is also sometimes an encouragement as a way to, could be to get more income and not go and travel. So I feel that it, the benefit and the burden should stay together and that we should be what, what amount we do. If somebody is charging up to a thousand and that's inappropriate, I think that that's the responsibility of the chair or whoever is in charge of this to see that there is an abuse going on. But you don't deal with abuse by not compensating people for their actual out-of-pocket expenses. I would very much oppose someone telling me that I need to put a, a flat rate that, um, at least for my district or say Brenda's district or where you're really driving to many different communities, um, and I mean, sometimes I drive, I've already driven where I'm going to Waikoloa, then I'm going to North Kohala, then I'm going to Waimea, um, and for different functions that can't all be covered. So I just would very much appreciate your taking into consideration um, keeping it in line with what is in fact done and what the, in fact are the out of costs, pocket costs. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, Councilmember Brenda Ford, and then I'll go to um, Dennis and Nisha. Thank you. <coughs> Very good. <coughs> Excuse me. I've operated under both systems since I've been on the council for six years. Um, and while my council district was relatively small, um, no, certainly not small like Hilo, but smaller than what I currently have, um, we took the flat rate for the first couple of years. And last term, it was determined that people weren't traveling as much, and the flat rate became basically a very big salary increase, about $7,200 a year. Even in very tiny districts, you know, the district might be 15 miles across. Those of us, like myself, who have a very huge district, and unfortunately have have to travel a great distance. My district, uh, District 6 used to be 118 miles across. It's only 86 miles across now. Um, but this last year, um, Dominic asked us to all go to the um, flat rate, keep our mileage, and I did. And you can look at the, the uh, information that Jay has provided to us, and you can see some months I had a lot of meetings and I drove a lot. In other months I had very, very few meetings. In my, that's within the old District 7 now, and then crossing the island. You're going to find when we get into the budget cycle and the meetings are held in Hilo, those of us not only are driving many hours, but we'll be driving much greater distances. It's 91 miles from this office to the Hilo office. So, um, it's, it's a very expensive proposition. Gas is very expensive. And it seems to me to be completely unfair to have people pay hundreds of dollars per month for the honor of working themselves into the grave. And I don't think that's right. Uh, if you want to set $300 for tiny districts and then let the rest of us use mileage, that's fine. But we went to mileage to save money last year. And it saved many tens of thousands of dollars. I suspect it'll do the same thing this year if we do mileage. And yes, it's a little cumbersome to have to keep your mileage record on a clipboard in your car like I do. But you know what? It works. We get used to it. Those of us who worked in the private sector were, who were required to do this, this is something I've done for 30 or 40 years. So it's not a big deal. You get used to it very quickly. We are not allowed to use the county gas pumps the way some departments are because we're using our private vehicle. So. To me, it's fair. You, you get paid back for what you spend on county business. To me, that's the only fair way to do it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Brenda. Um, Council Member Dennis Bonucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, this is my third term on this on this council, and um, I did do the flat rate before, and the last term I did do actual, but I never did claim any miles. Okay, I was one of I think three or two council members that never claimed at all. But to me, I think we're missing what this whole subject is about. The bottom line is, and that's what I mentioned to the council at the last term. The chair has authority to either give us actual or give us flat. Okay, we don't have to do any resolutions to say this is what we need to do. To me, like I mentioned before, it was very political. Okay, and that's why it came out up to me. And because if you look at what happened in the past in 2011, you can see like it was mentioned like to save money. Yes, but now you look at 2012, how everything would change. Okay, and then if you look at certain months, there was not even there wasn't any um, that the council members never even claim anything for those certain months. But then if you look at the pre the previous year before that, every month was claimed. Okay. And so we, I get well, because of what came out that the last term, we kind of felt that there was an abuse of, of the actual part, okay? And so now, as you can see in 2004, it kind of changed, but to me, the bottom line comes to our chair. He makes the decision, and he's not telling us, you just gotta go flat. It's an option that you can have. You can either go flat, which whatever amount he decides to do it, or you go actual. So everybody can still have their fair, fairness, okay, of claiming their mileage. So just, just a thought for you folks that, you know, basically the bottom line is the chair has the call and we didn't have to go to do, go through this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me go to um, council member uh, Gregor Elegon first and then I'll get back on this side. Thank you, chair. I do want to say I do support the flat rate when I looked at my gas mileage and how much I spent last month, I spent around 428. And I do agree with the fact that it is a little bit high when you're talking about $600. And if we do go more conservative and drop it to 300, I do rather pay that lower fee for that conveniency so I don't have to track the mileage. Because the last thing I want to think about is how, how far I went and how much miles that took me. I really want to focus on the people and their concerns and not have to be able to worry about, oh, I should attract this and that. So I do want to say I support the uh, flat rate option and giving us that option to do it. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll go to uh, Council Member Zendo Kern first. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the way I see that this resolution is, it just uh, it allows us to take our actual mileage, but it basically uh, prohibits the chair's discretion to give a flat rate. The way I see it is we should have the option for either one. We could have a flat rate of, say, three or $400, or you could choose to claim your mileage. And some, some council members, it'll work much better, such as uh, potentially uh, Councilwoman Margaret Willey, to claim actual mileage. Other folks that it kind of averages out, like uh, um, Councilmember uh, Elegan was saying they might choose to take the flat fee because some people don't do well at reporting all the mileage. I've done it for years. It is very, very cumbersome. This just allows us to have the option of something that's reasonable. Six hundred dollars is, is a bit much, but say three or four hundred dollars, the per we get to choose what works best for us. That's the point. What this does is it takes out the possibility of choice. That's why I won't support it. And I think we have a reasonable council right now. I think we have a reasonable chair. We are trying to be fiscally prudent and fiscally responsible. Um, and I think that there's a balance in this, but I don't think we should um, kill the option of having the option. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll go to Brenda first, then can I go back to you? So council member Brenda Ford. May I ask Mr. Rashida to come forward, please? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you identify yourself, please? Sure, Lincoln Ashita Corporation Council. 
Um, I would direct your attention to the first whereas statement um, where I'm quoting out of our, our county code, sec chapter 2, section 2 101, subsection B and C. <coughs> oh, I mean it. Okay. Dash 13. Okay. Give me the reference again where you're looking at. Yes, the first whereas state, uh, statement in Chapter 2, it talks about employees who are excluded from various bargaining units shall be paid the same rates provided for in negotiated contracts of bargaining units and that these employees would not, would have belonged to had they not been excluded. So that's just the basic. The second sentence says all other officers and employees of the county not covered by collective bargaining including county council members and duly authorized volunteer police and fire personnel shall be entitled to mileage re reimbursement at a rate equal to the highest rate payable to any county employee in the bargaining unit. Right now that's $600 a month. So going to $300 or $400 a month it seems to me would violate this section of the code. It's either $600 a month or flat rate. The C says flat monthly allowance. The mayor for the executive branch and the council chairman for the legislative branch authorize payment of monthly uh, automobile allowance for any council member, officer, employee for the regular right. privately owned. So, in my understanding of this, Mr. Sheeta, please correct me if I'm incorrect, is that if we're going to do a flat rate, it's got to be $600. Because that's the highest rate in any of the bargaining units. rate that they're referring to is the, the, the per mile rate, right? And the current mileage rate is 55 cents right. per mile. The flat rate is $600 per month. Well, I think that for the flat rate, that's governed by subsection C, right? Yes. So what subsection B is talking about, the earlier section, is actually the per mile rate, right? Yes, it talks about the mileage reimbursement right, as so a rate equal to. Basically, what he is saying, okay. if you're going to pay that, you have to pay the max, which is that's five cents. Yes. Or you can go flat rate, which is subsection C. So it provides you that option. I think. Yes, it does. That is absolutely correct. the co the pro The problem is, the highest amount paid to other county employees for the flat rate is six hundred dollars per month yeah but i don't think you can mix up sections b and c i think it's set out so you're given that option to either go to mileage or go to flat rate i don't think i don't think um subsection b qualifies c in other words i, I don't think it's i understand that so you're saying that we, that the chair can set any amount he, he wants under the flat rate and that's not going to be a problem we're not going to have somebody saying nope that's wrong and you've got to pay me 600. i think it's within his authority to set the flat rate if that's what he wants however if he goes under subsection b which is the per mileage rate then he has to adhere to must be 55 cents, allowable yes. under the cba i agree with that my concern is the 600 dollars per month that that cannot be lowered and you're saying that it can be your legal counsel is it can be lowered from 600 even though that might be the rate paid to other county employees, it can be lowered for the legislative branch by the chairperson. It will be low, it may be lower if you go under C, which is a flat monthly. Okay, yeah. thank you. I don't agree, but that's okay. Um, before I, okay, I'm gonna go to Council Member Jay Yoshimoto okay. because I put him off for a little while, so. <laughs> thank you, Madam Sorry. Chair. <laughs> okay, I wanna address Ms. Woolley's concern because I think and Ms. Court's concern too, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to save money. My point was, was that if you look
look at the actual figures and you look at your worst day, right? <laughs> we couldn't afford this. We couldn't afford a thousand bucks a month, sixteen hundred dollars. We just can't. You know, that's I'm talking. I'm talking about individual claims by council members, right? So my suggestion is, I know for a fact, looking at our budget, that if it was something like three hundred, we could afford this. I mean, that's that's the point. So whether you drive, you know, five miles or five hundred miles, I just uh, my suggestion to council members were, you know, to be fiscally responsible. Let's say, okay, this is a reasonable amount. You don't have to go through the paperwork of the mileage reimbursement, and, and then we know what our budget looks like, at least for now. But I can't compel you to do that, at least, you know, my interpretation is, if you want to claim actual, I mean, as long as it's verified and stuff, you can. Then when you look at the past, <laughs> you know, it can get really, really high, and you know, you times it by nine. And I don't know, the thing that I started out with, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen, who's going to collect what. But if we have a flat, we know what that is. So that's just the rationale, and and I'm not wedded to either one. I'm just telling it like it is to see, you know, what, what council members want. And if we run short, we run short, and we just got to find the money somewhere else. But I just think in the in the in the realm of the public's purview, if someone were to collect mileage, say a thousand bucks a month, and you're only making I don't know a uh, thousand per paycheck, whatever it is, it just seems uncomfortable. I mean, like for me, and so I think you know this is something a little bit more. Reasonable, so Miss I mean, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to say we're trying to save Can money I by doing that. But, that? but you're, you know, I hear what you're saying yeah. that the actual thing is more reflective. So if that's what you want to do. That's fine. I just okay. and I'll, I'll, um, I want to finish. I, I want to, I'll review each request as they come in. I can't, you know, again predict, you know, what I'll approve or not approve. But if you tell me that you went to this meeting for this purpose, I can't deny that. I mean, you know, right. so but it just. It can kind of pile on with the the mileage claim is just huge. I mean, so anyway. Thank, thank you, you so Chair. Um, Council Member Jay Yoshimoto, and I'd like to go to Margaret because I've been putting Margaret off for a while. So Council Member Margaret, really sorry. Okay, and I appreciate that what you said is that you're trying to hear um, different council members and what they have to say, and. Um, I think that when you're looking at and saying a thousand, if everybody were charging a thousand, everybody's district isn't that same size. I mean, I think one would have to average out what that's likely to be, and it wouldn't be a same amount. Um, and second, I just want to say, if you feel there's some abuse going on, you know, I'm happy to, for you to be very strict about these things and not deal with abuse in another way. I mean, not deal with rather than dealing with the person. And certainly when people are commuting to the office, as far as I'm concerned, that's not considered part of um, uh, of that amount. So um, I appreciate that there really is like um, what council member Iligan and, and also um, council member Kern were saying is allowing for um, either way at a, a reasonable flat rate um, and I, I just want to just throw in that I did agree with um, Lincoln Ashita's analysis, and I think um, just in terms of of differentiating, one is a reimbursement rate, mileage rate, and the other is a allowance, and those two are differentiable. And I don't not worry that somebody's going to challenge. flat rate of an amount under the $600. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, Council Member Karen Leoff. Thank you. Yes, um, looking at the code and listening to what uh, Mr. She just said, I would agree that um, Jay, and I would appreciate it if our chairman could, could give us the option to either charge um, actual and um, or a flat rate. But my question would be is what types of um, Expenses are allowable for council members as far as their mileage. Is that clear anywhere, or can they charge just to and from work, or only to and from a meeting, or to and from uh, public? Um, and we'll let yeah, council member Jay Oshimoto Thank you. address that. Uh, yeah, you, um, the policy is you cannot charge for going to work, and but you know from work, which would be your you know your your starting point, to a meeting, and you can charge for those. Okay, yes, Council Member Brenda Ford. Okay. Um, going to and from work to your regular office site, to and from work is always taken out, always. <laughs> Not included. 
If you get to the office and then you go to a meeting someplace, it depends on the direction you're driving. If you're driving towards your home, you can't claim it. If you're driving north, well, in my case, farther north, I can claim to and from the office. Again, I don't get paid for driving home. Um, if I cross the island, go to Hilo, which is not my normal office, I get paid mileage from West Hawaii Civic Center over to Hilo to the chambers over there. I cannot take my mileage to and from this office off of it. So for instance, if you look at my bills, you'll see 106 miles when I leave from home and go to Hilo. And I have to deduct 15 miles in each direction for my to and from work um, mileage. So, and then you can also charge mileage between your hotel, it's one mile, nobody gets the big money off of that one. So, but you put all of those things down. In my case, driving across District 6, because I'm gonna to have to start traveling more, um, and a lot of night driving, unfortunately, um, but I, I've committed to do that. I'm driving away from the office. So if I leave my home and drive to Volcano, that mileage to and from my home is removed. But, and there's no mileage to the office, so there's nothing there. So you just have to, you get used to it, you get used to it, what you can claim and what you can't. And um, it's about, you know, doing as much as you can sequentially, try to get meetings. The problem that you have is that people come to meetings, they come to meetings at night. They're working during the day. And so you have to, you have to make yourself um, responsible to attend those types of meetings. Well then, um, Madam Chair, I'm not sure how, how we are to deal with this resolution because it seems like it um, prohibits the chair from setting the policy of giving us the option. Well, if, if the uh, vote, if this resolution fails, then it is my understanding that the chair does make that decision. Um, uh, can I go to Drew Kanuma first, Council Member Drew Kanuma? Thank you for giving me my second time to speak. Um, yeah, I, going off of what the code says, I, I agree with what is what it also says in BNC in, in having the chair authorize the flat monthly rate um, in, a, in a manner so that, are giving us the option of both the, the actual and the flat. I think you have a idea of how much we could save or how much we could be prudent on in the amount we spend by having a lower flat monthly rate and and to, to have, for you having the choice, I think, with going along with what it says in the county code, um, I I will vote for that, or if I even need to vote for that, or what it is. But that's that's what I think. Thank you, um, Council Member um, Zendokar. Thank you, Chair. I agree. We should have. Bottom line is, I think we should have the options. I think if the <laughs> chair can have the discretion to bring down that monthly allowance because six is too much to three or four. Figuring that one out. Um, I think we should move forward, which means we don't need this bill, which means we'd have to vote it down. It would still move forward to uh, regular county council meetings, and we'd continue to vote it down there. And we're basically at the same place with just another option. Um, I would also recommend that if you do have any mileage questions, such as I've done, is call, call up our corporation council, and you can ask them, and they'll give you the code. And I've talked with them about that to make sure that everything is, every mileage claim is on the, on the up and up. So uh, I say let's move forward, though. And um, I, I would like to say something if there is no objections. <clears throat> I understand that, um, you know, just like my district is a large district also. Um, and I know I, I'll be traveling a lot. Right, Margaret? Because I'm going to have to come to Waimea a lot. <laughs> so, you know, I feel, you know, for me, I know I get more than what you probably will set. However, I would probably take the set amount because I'm not good with, you know, if I'm leaving the Hilo office and I have to travel all the way to Waimea, I got to remember, I got to remove miles here to get to Ocala, get to Waimea, then I can come back home. This, you know, to, for me, so having, yeah, the time, the effort, the paperwork, for me is time is money also. I know I'll probably lose money on that, but that's a choice. I'll make, and at least there is a choice. So I think it's fair that we have that choice. Um, and it's, it's just about being fair. So um, that's my opinion, and I'd love to have a choice. 
Thank you. Any further discussion? I guess my question is the same then. Do we want to um, um, vote down this resolution if we want the choice or do we amend it to include? We just, if, if we vote it down, then the chair has the ability to make that decision. Okay. So that might, that would be simpler than trying to put language in here to give us that option. And that's your choice. So I vote it down, vote the resolution down. Call a question. So any, any call for question? Okay, I understand. Okay, being that there's no further discussion, uh, Deputy Clerk, will you please call the vote? Ms. Dio? No. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Elagon? No. Mr. Kanova? No. Mr. Kern? No. Mr. Oleshi? No. Ms. Willie? No. Mr. Yoshimoto? No. Fairpoint Dexter? No. Fairpoint Dexter, you have one aye. Resolution 14-13 fails. Deputy Clerk, will you please read communication 15 into the record? Overview of the Office of the Legislative Auditor and presentation of the fiscal year 2012-2014 audit plan from Legislative Auditor Colleen Tran, dated November 29, 2012, requesting time to present the above information. May I have a motion to close file on communication 15? I have a, a first from Council Member Zendo Kern, and uh, it's been seconded by Council Member Drew Panuha. Um, so at this time, do we have do we do a discussion first, or we do, this just a presentation, right? Okay. So please uh, state your name for the record. Pauline Schrant, Legislative Auditor. And before I start, I'll go ahead and enter the staff from the office. This is Maxine Pacheco. She's an audit analyst in the office. And in Hilo, we have Lang Shibata, who's also an audit analyst, and Joan Casper. We have one other staff member and administrative staff. Okay, so as far as who we are, we're organized through the county charter. Section 318 of the County Charter establishes an independent office within the legislative branch. What we do by the charter, we are charged with procuring and overseeing the external audit by a certified public accountant, the annual audit of the county's financial transactions and financial statements as prepared by county management. We also conduct performance and or financial audits of the funds, programs, services, and operations of any county agency, executive agency, or program as set forth by the auditor's office and an annual audit plan. And sorry, folks, to the got to cut it off. And got another meeting. Work. We also then conduct follow-up audits from the county. Um, Aloha. The 